Be sure to check out my limited edition holiday merch available from November 20th to December 4th. Link in the description. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's Dan here. Welcome back to LA Noir. Uh, uh, 20... <laughs> I was going to say episode something for some reason. I don't know. Anyway, 2017 version PS4. Let's keep going with some more homicide cases. we will look into it yes I'm aware that it's an election year keep a hold of your hat counselor now is not the time to lose your nerve it would appear that someone has hocked a rose gold wedding ring a matching engagement ring sound familiar dear Muller. press the pawnbroker and see what you can find out the address is 348 South Main Street the Muller case goes before the grand jury next week, and the DA does not want any egg on his face. Then get out to the railroad depot on Santa Fe Avenue. We have another poor unfortunate found this morning beside a railroad line. Forty-year-old white woman. Right, Skipper. They're always like Christ. women in their forties, seeming drunk or discombobulated, randomly at the another late nights. I don't want to get involved in whatever those two are doing. The Emperor may soon have to come to terms with the fact that he's wearing no clothes. Exactly. Did you get that book of riddles shoved up your ass, though? Is that what your old man paid college tuition for? All right, y'all. So we're behind the wheel. We're going to head to the pawnbroker first Fine. to go check out Where those uh, those goodies. That's the guy from the papers. Solved that CK. Dude, I've solved, like, I don't know how many cases at this point. I've solved a lot. Like, they skipped the burglary desk. Did you notice that? We went from traffic right to homicide, even though we got a promotion to burglary. But that's what happened in six months. This is looking odd. Anyone could call it. But if you take it along with all of the other indicators... Cole, Hugo Moeller was identified by the school's groundkeeper. He's our guy. Witnesses have fingered the wrong guy before. He ran, for God's sakes. And he always maintained he was set up. Funny because these are all like some mini cases in the grand scheme of things cases, you, you know boys. what I mean? Detectives Phelps and Galloway, LAPD. You have a rose gold wedding and engagement ring? David Bremner. Am I gonna get something for this pledge? Gave that bum money, now you guys are gonna leave me short. How much did you give him? Fifty bucks? Try another number. Twenty? Try ten. Feel lucky you're getting it. I have the rings right here. Why can't we just look at them? We don't need them, do we? What's this mark here? Maker's mark. Usually traceable. That one came from Hartfield's Jewelry down on Broadway. Do you remember that one? Thanks for the tip. Hartfield's was that jeweler in one of our first main cases on patrol. You know where Buddy was like swindling him money or whatever? Does this mark mean anything? 
Hallmark. Gives you an idea of the quality. 22 carat. That's that's decent. What have you got on the guy who brought these in? Goes by the name of Percy B. Shelley. Gave an address. 15 Poland Street, London, Tulare County. Can you give us a description of the man who pawned these rings? Not sure. Medium height, medium build, dark hair, I think. Sorry. He just had one of those forgettable faces. We'll be in touch, Mr. Bremner. <laughs> medium height, medium build, darker hair. So pretty much everybody in Los Angeles. Can you drive to this one? All right, anyway. Where exactly are we going? Let's go check out the new crime scene. New victim. We have a problem. We could have the local troopers check out the Tulare County address. The address is bogus. The purpose having fun with us. The guy who's been sending the Dahlia letters is also the guy who pawned these rings. How do you figure that? Percy Bysshe Shelley wrote the poem that came with the Dahlia letter. If the Dahlia letters are genuine, then the man who killed Elizabeth Short may have also killed Deirdre Muller. And how do we prove that, Phelps? Skipper ain't gonna lie to this one. We're gonna have to rely on this guy tripping up on his own vanity. It's been a while since we've been at a, at a, at a rail yard. You boys ready? Follow me. Oh, isn't she missing? Is she missing her head? Development with the ring. I can't remember. Until we speak with the captain. We're all on the same team, Rusty. Chain of command, Phelps. The skipper will decide who needs to know. Got it? I get it, Rusty. I just don't like it. Maybe not. Hard, isn't it? Yeah. I look after all the rail depots. What have you got? The Negro, Nelson Gaines, called it in. I came down here to make sure him and the other guy, Jameson, stuck around. Jameson found the body? Something like that. Guy makes me sick. All right. I'll talk to the coroner. Keep an eye on both of them. Dude, he's a necrophiliac, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, before we do anything, there's actually a couple of cars we could use. Like this police Studebaker. When do you see these? Sorry, don't mind me. I'm just getting in some... I don't know if I got this one yet. <laughs> Thank you. Just in case. I probably won't end up going for that, but you know what it is. Anyway, let's look around. Should we check out the body first? Let's check out the body first. It looks to be the closest. Actually, hold on. Let's talk. Let's talk to the coroner. Or not the, talk to him. What have we got here? White female, approximately 40 years of age. Lipstick smudges on the face, but no writing. At least nothing legible. A blunt force trauma to the temple, nose, and eye regions. Ligature marks point to the probable cause of death being strangulation. Any idea of the time of death? From her temperature, after midnight would be my guess. Okay, um, hold on, actually, where was the... This guy's close, let's talk to him real fast. Detective Phelps and Galloway, homicide. Can you tell me exactly what happened? We were shunting cars over to the main line when I saw this man here lying on top of this woman. The woman wasn't moving and seemed to be in a bad way. What time was this? About 7.30 this morning, sir. Thanks for your help. Have you given Patrolman Hart your details? I have, sir. Thank you, you can go now. Thanks, my man. All right, anyway, back to the body. There's a little something, something on the behind the train car. So she was hitting the head, and the arterial spray hit the hit the train Blood car. splatter on the carriage. She must have been struck while standing up. Okay. Body time. Okay, now we can actually check it out. Oh, look at her eye. Oh, my smell. God. Very good. There is the usual evacuation smell. But it appears she's been living rough for quite some time. Very strong smell of alcohol. Well, the autopsy will tell, but I would assume that she was inebriated. Makes sense. Most of them have been. Anything on the arms? Any ripped off jewelry? Nope. 
Anything in the center? No. So there's got to be the, something on the, the right arm. Yes, another ripped off ring. Another missing ring. Certainly seems I've been swabbing a lot of bare fingers recently. Can you be more exact about the time of death? No later than 2 a.m. The state the body was in, a one or two hour window is the best I can do. Hmm. Considering what you had, good job, man. like it but it's the upper half so again I feel like homeboy has the other half somewhere else we could go over to the lot and see what they know about her that's gonna be difficult Cole Keystone studio lot closed back in 41 yeah look at that October 31st 41 what about that Okay, there's some cigarette. There's a, some or er, some matches from yet another bar. Maybe someone at Mensch's will remember her. This is a chit for personal items, not booze. It's an angle worth investigating. Yeah, I think that's it here. Oh, okay. Apparently that's all for now. So, this guy here. Is this the guy who is mucking about with the body? Detective Phelps, LAPD homicide. John Ferdinand Jameson. We need you to answer some questions, John. If you don't mind, I prefer Ferdinand. Don't push your luck, knucklehead. What were you doing to the body, Ferdinand? Are you sure you won't be upset? Try me, Ferdinand. I was kissing her. Ugh. It's not against the law. Shut up. There's no Take law your against it. Like a man. Turn out your pockets, Ferdinand. That's so gross, dude. The disrespect. Classic Carmine. It's the same brand, is it not? Is this yours, Ferdinand? No. I found it near her purse. I thought she could use some lipstick. Oh my Plus god, stop, dude. Don't hit him. You'd like to, though. What a sick fuck. You uh, went through her purse? It wasn't like she needed it. I took a look. Ugh. He's telling the truth about that. Did you take any money? Wasn't any to take. I found her lipstick and her matchbook over on the mat. Not much else. You found the body? Yes, I did. I work here. I was coming off shift and headed home. Yeah, about that, dude. Why didn't you report the body, Jameson? Do you know how this is going to look to a jury? A jury? What gives? I, I could tell that she was dead. Oh! I came through here about midnight last night. She wasn't here then. Let me belt him again. You're under arrest, Jameson. We'll see how this plays out. Until then, you can think a little on how you'd like to be treated if you were found dead. I'm telling you, it's not illegal. Me and some friends of mine... Clyde, you get this sack of shit into a cell. I'll deal with him later. Sure, Rusty. Necrophilia. How, it, I mean, if it wasn't illegal then, it fucking is now. Like, give me a break. Anyway, we gotta phone it in. We gotta get... We have the address of the, uh, the bar. But I think there's more to it than that. Phelps badge 1247. I need an address on Levine's Liquor, closest store to the Santa Fe Avenue rail yard, if possible. Just a moment, detective. Closest store would be the one at 939 South Hope Street. Thanks, ma'am. All right, actually, we're going to go there first. Forgot about the liquor store. All right, where's our whip? You know the way. You can drive. Liquor store first. Fine. Where are we headed? You're not going in my car. Oh my god. <laughs> it's so dumb. 
too lazy the to walk those around. Those goddamn Chinese want to sell the relief food that we're sending them? Yeah. Yeah, I read about that. Those people are starving. They can't do that. They want to sell the food to fund the civil war against the communists. Really? I guess that's okay, then. That's pretty noble. Armies can't fight without food. You spend all your money on weapons, but you still have to have the will to fight. Fortunately, the Reds will win in China. Watch your mouth. You know what you're saying? The people of this country overthrew a king. You think the Chinese will balk at an emperor if they are starving? What can I do for you? LAPD, Phelps and Galloway. We're making inquiries into the murder of Evelyn Summers. Evelyn? She's dead? You knew Evelyn Summers, Mr. Robbins? Yes, I knew Evelyn. I was a good friend of her ex-husband. She kept some of her stuff here. Can you show us, please? Sure. Come this way. some fine stock here, Mr. Robbins. You know, you let us take some for the road, this case might get solved a lot quicker. <laughs> Damn it, Rusty. He's joking, Mr. Robbins. She kept a bed here, but I probably shouldn't have let her. An alcoholic in a liquor store, that was never going to work out, was it? Nope. We'll take a look around. She wasn't always such a loner. I'm not sure if this is anything on the case. We'll take a look. Evelyn oh, it does. Was reading Aristotle. Evelyn wasn't stupid. The only stupid thing about her was her need to drink. Oh wait, did wait? Sorry, did something pop up? Yeah, I didn't look at it. And she was borrowing books from Grosvenor McCaffrey. I remember that name. What was that guy doing? Something else, isn't there? I'm guessing Evelyn hadn't held down a job for quite some time before she was killed. The bo I think actually the bowling pin has an address. I remember this. Rawlings Bowling Alley. Maybe Evelyn did something other than drink in her spare time. Rawlings. I know that place. Corner of 9th and Grand. A lot of cops bowl there on Tuesday nights. Thank you. I don't know if we need this. Probably not, but let's just grab it. Exactly, did Evelyn work in the pictures? A few years ago. She worked in legal copyrights for music. Okay. Is that it? Yes. Okay, we're done here. We could go all back. But we'll go in the front just in case dude wants to say something else. All right, I got to talk to him, dupe. We're trying to account for Evelyn's movements yesterday. She came by in the morning. A social visit to pick up some of her things? She had a couple of bucks and bought a quart of rye. Yeah. Any idea where the money came from? She didn't mention it. But she did say the booze was a present for a boy. She said they had been fighting, and she had to make it up to him. Were you and Evelyn close, Mr. Robbins? Not many people will be sad she's gone. I'll be one of the few. Yeah, he's very truthful. We got the impression that Evelyn had been sleeping rough of late. It became difficult for me to have her staying here. Her mother was trying to get her back on the straight and narrow. She's old now. To be honest, you have to have a good reason to want to get back on. Do you know a friend of Evelyn's by the name of McCaffrey? Not personally. That one... 
Yeah, see, he's looking down. That one I wasn't sure of. We are struggling for leads, Robbins. Did she know McCaffrey? She idolized him. From what I gather, the feeling was far from mutual. He seems to peddle a revolutionary stance, fixing the ills of society. You could see how it would appeal to down and outs like Evelyn. Thanks for your help, Mr. Robbins. No problem. Hey, I'd like to make arrangements for the funeral. You think I could get in touch with Evelyn's mother? Put in a call to the watch commander at Central Station, Mr. Robbins. He'll be trying to reach the next of kin. Thanks. Get the guy, huh? Evelyn never hurt anybody. Feel for you, dude. Anyway, let's grab let's grab a six pack and we'll be out of here. All right, so I guess we we'll go drive. to the bar now. And where exactly are we going? There's a lot of bars. A lot of this thing, like a lot of interactions happen at bars, like a lot of these crimes. Someone goes to a bar and then problems occur from that bar. <laughs> Phelps, Galloway, homicide. We need to ask you some questions concerning Evelyn Summers. I'm Walter Match. Evelyn Summers, what is it now? You knew Evelyn? As well as I wanted to know Evelyn. She's a pain in the ass, always coming in here, cadging drinks, never had any money. She was in just a couple of nights ago. Did she ever tell you where she was staying? I don't know. I think she was living rough. She had that kind of stunk about her. Who did she drink with? A bunch of these guys. Ask around. I think this guy right in front of me is. What's your name? Grosvenor McCaffrey. Mind if I ask you some questions, ah, this Mr. Dude. McCaffrey? I'm just a starving writer, detective. What do you want to ask about? Evelyn Summers and why she was found beaten and strangled in the rail depot on Santa Fe. Okay. I see your point. How well did you know her? I can't say that I knew her. It was more like I was aware of her. Yeah, this guy actually... Oh, no, this guy... I know this, I know this actor quite well. Again, I can't remember his name. There's so many faces I know. Do you have a criminal record, Mr. McCaffrey? Nothing serious. I've had a few skirmishes. Sure, dude. Look at that. Whenever they don't make eye contact... Do you want to save me some time, or do you want me to look up your file? Industrial disputes, strikes, workers' rights, that kind of thing. A regular fifth columnist. Nice to meet you, comrade. You say you barely knew Evelyn? Yes, that is correct. No, it's not, because you, you gave her your book. That's how we found you. That's how we know who you are. You're lying, McCaffrey. You looked down your nose at Evelyn, but you knew her, and you have some idea of what happened. I hope you're holding aces. I'm telling you again, I barely knew the woman. I'm holding a gun, though. Do you want me to show you? Legit, though, the book with his name in it. Why would you lend her your book on metaphysics if you only knew her in passing? It was more than that. A renaissance man like yourself lending his books to his acolytes. She hounded me about that goddamn book. And then she lifts it from my apartment and lies to my face that she didn't take it. As if she could even comprehend any of it. Sound a bit salty. I saw her go into a hotel with Tiernan last night. They had booze in a paper bag. He's your man. Thank you for the information, Mr. McCaffrey. All right, well, we're done there. So, should I... I'm assuming I should go to the bowling alley? Oh, I don't really I'm have a choice. You go to the case notes. So. Fine. Where are we headed? Car 11K, car 11K, come in. What's up? Car 11K, car 11 King, KGPL. 11 King. A message from Captain Donnelly, return to Central, go to. 11 King, en route. Let's not keep the man waiting. No, no, get out of the car.
Just in case there's some evidence here. Hello, Rusty. Two on your usual lane? I'm Detective Phelps. Homicide. You must be new. <laughs> What's your shoe size? We're conducting an investigation, ma'am. Do you know the name Evelyn Summers? Sounds like I should. Oh, maybe it could be Jimmy's friend. Jimmy? James Tiernan. He's a pin setter. One day he introduced me to a lady after work. Stuck in my mind because she was much older, too old for him. Where can we find Jimmy Florence? He'll be hopping around the lanes toward the back. Thanks, ma'am. It seems like... Let's go get him. It seems like Phelps is always shouting. Like, she can hear you, and then, like, Rusty's just like, Hey, Florence, how you doing? Yeah, this was before, you know... Thanks for running. Fixed pins. So you're the first in this family. I love these waitresses. Everyone's a dog. Oh, wait a minute. I missed it. My bad. Sorry. Hi, everybody. How's everybody doing? Sam's taking me out of the prison. Bowling really hasn't changed much, have it? has it? Over the years. Tiernan! LAPD! Oh, you bastard. Why you gotta run? He's actually got a really nice car. For some reason. There! Oh, so do we, baby! What are you waiting for? Get after him! We might go faster if we weren't carrying the extra weight. Oh, savage! These are flashy cars to be parked outside a bowling alley. The lanes attract a fast-living individual with money to burn. Or a middle-aged individual with the need to feel virile. We'll get him. Hang on. Don't go to sleep on me. Get me back in close. I don't want to ruin anything. Another runner. At least we've got a suspect. Why do Whoa. they always run? I'm sure we've got the wrong person in more than one of these homicides, but they always seem to lamb it. You know, your theories are not airtight by any means. Get him! Hit him, Cole! Spit him out! Come on, his tires are done! If this isn't the killer, we can at least get him for reckless endangerment. That's unless he runs into a wall. No, you're ruining my trouble. city! Rusty, Keep shoot him! Keep I'll try to bust his tires! Forgot you did! Don't damn it, don't hit anything, just keep it steady. Okay, seriously, Rusty, I'm getting sick of this. Hit it! Clean this asshole off the road. Like, how is he still going? Phelps, you gotta get me closer! There we go. Whoa, looks like we're going into the tunnels. God damn it, he'll kill himself. Alright, well, he doesn't kill us, I'm okay with it. Oh my god, this kid's crazy. He's gonna kill us. Dude, you could have stopped him ages Hands ago. Hands behind your head. Jesus. Why does everybody just run? I Like, even if they're just scared. Stay and talk to the police. Because we're gonna catch you anyway. Anyway. I like that whip. But it's not ours. You're behind the wheel. All right, now let's go to the Where cop exactly shop. Where exactly are we going? All right, let's head on in. We got to go to the basement, correct? The captain is downstairs with Ray Pinker and Carruthers. Come in. I need a drink. What's this about, Captain? Ray and Mal have some concerns over the Henry and Muller cases, which I don't want aired outside of this room. The evidence is solid, Captain. I agree, Rusty. It's just that corpses keep piling up. Copycats. I've been banging the same drum. But the notes and the lipstick messages. Evelyn Summers, cartel classic Carmine. Each woman, same brand, same color. Teresa Terrelson didn't have a lipstick message. Technically, you're right, Rusty. She didn't have any lipstick, but she did have a message. We found it beneath her dress, scraped with a sharp stick. What did it say? You sure you want to know? Ray, 
As far as we can be sure, it said cunt BD. That's one way of looking at it. Looking at what? Cunt is all about access, Phelps. You're married, so yours is mortgaged. Some of us like to pay by installments. This guy doesn't like to pay at all. Why are you so angry, Mal? Because I just had to fire one of my assistants. He was a friend of Jameson's. God knows what he might have been up to. Captain, we have good leads in the Summers case, but it's up to you to decide how we proceed. Keep this under your hat for now. And to follow up on Evelyn Summers, I want daily reports. We got our orders. Back to the Summers case. Get an address for McCaffrey. He'll have blown the bar. I'll meet you outside. Wow, why did I do that? All right, anyway, let's go. The bum took a swipe at me. Put him down. Use the phone. Find out the location of McCaffrey's. Operator, give me R and I. Putting you through now. Phelps, one, two, four, seven. How can I help, detective? I need an address for a Grosvenor McCaffrey. Grosvenor McCaffrey. Apartment 6, 126 Yale Street, between Ord and Alpine. Thank you. All right, guys, let's head on over to that apartment. Can you drive to this one? Wait, what's at the police Fine. station? Where are we headed? Well, let's go to the apartment. I'm sure we'll be back there anyway to interview people. Whose quality is your Let me pose a question. Depends. What you got to do with? Morals. Would it bother you to put the wrong person away? Depends. On what? On whether anyone except the poor son of a bitch in the slammer ever found out. Okay, so let's go ahead and check. Which apartment homeboy is in? Number six. McCaffrey is in apartment six. Which I would assume is on the first floor? Actually, it could, could be second floor. I'm gonna go and say it's gonna be up on a floor. Because I've noticed the apartments are never on the first floor. Apartment six? Yes. Nope, oh, to the left. Hello? Oh, where are the goodies? Oh, this is something. Oh, the shirt. Wait, hold on. Before we look at the shirt. Oh, that is something. I thought so. It didn't beep. That's the other half of the letter. from the letter we found beside the body. At the very least, I'd say it ties McCaffrey to the scene. It's also possible... Oh, wait, there's a book here. I don't think it's of any... important Circumstantial. Yeah, it's just his book. I wonder why they make you look at that. Now look at the shirt. Or rather, the, the tire iron and the shirt. Bowling alley. He said he was at home. He said he didn't know her. And we have the Let's see Carruthers argue his way out of this one. Is that you, Grosvenor? Who are you guys? What are you doing in here? We're from the LAPD, ma'am. Do you know where we might find McCaffrey? I'm his neighbor. Is he in trouble? Look, lady, we need to find him, and in a hurry. Are you going to give me trouble? He has a pigeon coop up on the roof. He spends his mornings up there when he's been drinking. How do we get up there? Down the hall and up the stairs. Drunk and in command of a carrier pigeon. Hmm. Surely we can ride him up to that. A citation, at least. Unless, of course, I was supposed to head to, uh... That's the guy from the papers. Salt that big the stairwell here. Here we go. Roof access. What is he doing? Grosvenor McCaffrey! Yeah, you Funny, said you're a tack pigeon. McCaffrey? Sit down and we'll talk. 
I got him, don't worry. Go Phelps, go! Hustle, hustle. I would have jumped off the escapement and landed on him. I mean, I know it's kind of risky, but still. Go, 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 go! I find stairs really slow you down. You a runner, McCaffrey? Stay I'm... and fight the good fight. Oh, come on, I can catch him. I'm not within the fast sprint yet. Ma'am, I'm dangerous. Where's this prick going? Come on! Come on, Phelps, run! Give it up, LAPD! I can't pull my gun out. I don't understand why you can't do that. Okay, I'm gonna mash. This is where I catch him. This is where I catch him. This is where I catch him. I'm mashing. It's not there yet. It's come on! It's run, dude! There you go. Mash, 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 mash. Got him! McCaffrey, Woo. you're under arrest on suspicion of murdering Evelyn Summers. Damn. We need to get downtown and wrap this thing up. It's got to be McCaffrey. Unless Terranen set him up. You never know. I think that asshole is dangerous. Yeah, whoever did it. So what's that Dahlia fuck? How do you know that McCaffrey didn't do the Dahlia? We have a list of over 200 suspects. His name was never on it. If you think the list is exhaustive, Rusty, who am I to argue? Listen, let's just work the case at hand, shall we? Then we can sit down and put all the puzzle pieces together at a later date. I'll hold you to that. Okay, so this is another one. We gotta, in or we gotta investigate two chaps. Tiernan and McCaffrey. You sure you can make it stick with one of these suspects, gentlemen? It's either McCaffrey or Tiernan, sir. I think Jameson is an aberration. All right. I'll deal with that degraded lunatic myself. He's got some fearful retribution coming. Tiernan is a one, McCaffrey isn't two. I want a confession from one of them. Don't fail me, young Phelps. All right, well, let's do, let's do Tiernan first. Why did you run, Tiernan? I was the last one to see Evelyn that night. I knew you would think it was me. I know this chap, too. Can you describe your relationship with Evelyn? I, I barely knew Evelyn. Uh, no. You just said. Keep lying to me and I'll have you charged and in front of a grand jury before your feet touch the ground. <laughs> How can you possibly prove Evelyn and I were more than friends? This one right here, right? Hold on. Yeah. McCaffrey gave you up, Tiernan. He says he saw you go into your hotel with Evelyn. I met Evelyn at the public library. We would read for a while and then go for a drink. Last night, we went back to my hotel room and had some more to drink. I must have passed out. I woke up and she was gone. What time was this? Around midnight, maybe later. And there's no one who can confirm this? No, there isn't. I knew you wouldn't believe me. Aristotle's Metaphysics, the book that belonged to McCaffrey. McCaffrey saw her looking at her once and laughed in her face. And you're saying Evelyn stole it? She wanted something of his. I think there's more to it than that, my man. Yeah, he looks really sketchy. We either hang this on you or McCaffrey. You better give us something. Well, McCaffrey's been in trouble with the law before. I mean, he always makes out it was some kind of labor dispute. But, you know, I'm, I'm not so sure. You and Evelyn were drinking together last night. And she had no other place to stay. I don't know what happened last night. I, I don't remember. I feel like you do. Don't we have... Hold on. Uh, we have something. You're lying, Tiernan. You've been fighting with her. You fought and... I'm not lying! She got up and left! That was it! No, 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 no. This. For a boy after the argument. Do you remember that? She left, but she came back. She bought you a quart of whiskey to make it up to you. 
She told the liquor store owner, you're in deep trouble, buddy. She said she loved me. She wanted to care for me. But she would never stop talking about McCaffrey. McCaffrey was a writer, and McCaffrey was a hero. McCaffrey cared for the little guy. Did you kill her, Tiernan? I might as well have. I kicked her out. She had nowhere to go. Do you own a car, Tiernan? No, I don't. Hmm. Have access to a lug wrench? Well, we use a lot of them to clear jams in the pin setting machines. Yeah, let's doubt that, Cheese. Coroner's report says that Evelyn was killed with a wrench. I think you did it and then planted the evidence at McCaffrey's apartment for us to find. We went to his apartment. McCaffrey was up on the roof. Evelyn stole the book. <laughs> McCaffrey went crazy when he found out. He said, he said he would put her out of her misery. He can be very cruel. All right, we're not going to charge him. Evelyn was missing a ring from her right hand. That's strange. She always wore it. Uh, a big black circular disc with a white E in the middle. It was made from an old typewriter key, a present from the prop department at her old movie studio. We're going to talk to McCaffrey. You need to think about what you've told us, Tiernan. You're not in the clear. I feel like, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, we have to go back and forth like three times. So we go to talk to McCaffrey, and then we go back to Tiernan, and then back to McCaffrey again. You ready to answer some questions? You think I have all the answers? People who run from the police usually have something to hide. Touche, detective. Let's see where this takes us. Evelyn died sometime around midnight. Remind me, where were you? I was at home, writing. I'm working on a manuscript. Okay, we already know that's bullshit because we have the other half of that letter at his house. You're lying, McCaffrey. You were out at the rail yard. And what do you have that proves I was there? Where was it? Would this be considered, hold on. Addressed to Evelyn places, pieces found in, yeah. How about half of Augusta Summer's last correspondence with her daughter? What are you talking about? After you were done beating Evelyn, you searched her and found her mother's letter. That old lady's anguish amused you. I know nothing about a letter or Evelyn's goddamn mother. So what was it doing on your writing desk? I don't know, but if I didn't put it there, somebody else did. Try exercising your powers of deduction on that. We found the lug wrench that Evelyn was battered with in your apartment, and the note from her mother, and your blood-stained clothing. We have you cold, McCaffrey. You think if I could be bothered to murder Evelyn Summers, I would be stupid enough to leave the evidence in my apartment? I don't know. I feel like he's a little sketchy about it. And besides, don't we have Tiernan's... Tiernan said so. He has a history. Governor. The evidence says that you killed her. You can prove that I wanted to kill Evelyn? Yes. Right here. Tiernan just said it. Threats of violence against him. Tiernan is prepared to testify that you threatened Evelyn's life in his presence. Self-preservation. That's understandable. Okay, I'll level with you. Tiernan killed Evelyn. He came to me for help. I listened to him, and he explained why he did it. Tiernan went to you for help. You expect me to buy that? That's how it went down. I told him he made a terrible mistake, but he would be throwing his life away if he went to the cops. I took his things and told him I would dispose of them. But you didn't. Speak to Tiernan. He'll give it up. All right. But now, there's a phone. Hold on, we gotta use the phone. One second. Why do we have to pay in the police station? Operator, message for KGPL. Putting you through now. Phelps, badge 1247. How can I help, detective? 
I need the jacket on a Grosvenor McCaffrey. Just a moment, detective. McCaffrey was formerly under surveillance by the Red Squad. Convictions for petty theft. Dishonorable discharge from the Army during training at Syracuse. Assault on a local woman. Says he almost beat the woman to death. Thanks for your help. There you go. There's his criminal record. All right. Well, either way, we got to go back to Tiernan because McCaffrey pointed the finger right at him. So we're going to have to ask him. You've spoken to McCaffrey? I can go. It's all been cleared up. Not quite. We have one more question we need to ask, James. Then I think we will be done. Sure. Go ahead. So Evelyn passed out and you walked out. What happened next? I woke up in the morning. Very hungover. I thought Evelyn would have come back. But what did... No, no, no. We can use the accusation. I know you're lying, James. You went out looking for her. Tell me what really happened. I don't know what you're talking about. How, how can you say I wasn't in that hotel room? Because you apparently went to McCaffrey. Right here. You wound up at McCaffrey's. You were still incredibly drunk. You passed out on his floor. It's time to tell me what really happened. McCaffrey woke me up the next morning. And he showed me the lug wrench and the letter and the box. And he said I came in with him last night. He said that I killed Evelyn. And that it was all over the radio. And that he would protect me. And I don't know, Detective, for the life of me, I can't remember a goddamn thing. And I was angry with her. Really angry. I could have done it. it wasn't me. Leave for now. We got to go talk to McCaffrey. Wait here. I'm pretty sure McCaffrey was framing the kid. Because he was so drunk, he took advantage of that. Oh, where am I going? Whoops. Because now we have his record where he's been... He's beat, he's beat women before. You were in the war? Yes, I was. Seeing the things that I saw. It changes a man. I came back here determined to change things. All I wanted was a pen and an opportunity to speak out. You told us before that you had only minor run-ins with the police. You didn't mention petty theft. I've never been in trouble for violence. That's the salient point here, isn't it? That's the biggest lie. We just had it. You're lying, McCaffrey. You have a history of violence towards women. How do you turn a couple parking tickets in a petty theft misdemeanor? into an assault charge. That's cute that you think your record is, like, secret. We know all about you and your dishonorable discharge. Beating some poor woman near to death in Syracuse. You've never been in combat, McCaffrey. Your whole life is a fraud. She was a goddamn peasant whore! She tried to steal from my wallet! I could've fought for this country! I could've... You beat her because she stole from you. Because she tried to outsmart you. The ignorant audacity of the bitch. What is a man supposed to do? Sit there and take it? How is a man supposed to call himself a man? And Evelyn Summers, a poor, drunken nobody, stole your book. And she got what was coming to her. Damn. Well, there's that. We're charging his bitch ass. Grosvenor McCaffrey, I'm charging you with the murder of Evelyn Summers. She was a sad lady who never hurt anyone except herself. I hope God finds a way to forgive you. Congratulations, boys. You bagged the fine catch. Another red to boot. Grand. Now, I want you to put this business about a repeat offender out of your mind. This McCaffrey creature shows no remorse. And neither will the grand jury. You would have to walk a long mile to find a better candidate for an unmarked plot at the prison graveyard. He broke. Broke him down.
We let him know. And wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. I was concerned about the vehicle damage during that chase scene, but apparently it didn't count because it wasn't our car. <laughs> well, there you go, guys. Five stars, studio secretary murder, valorous rating, everything done as usual. Governor McCaffrey can write a tell-all memoir from his cell on death row. Sounds like a win to me. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for this case. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, do me a favor, hit that like button. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you haven't yet, be sure to like and follow my pages on social media. Those will be down below in the description and will play at the end card of this video. If you're interested and you want to get yourself a shirt or a hoodie, there's a link to my Spreadshirt shop in the description as well. Thank you guys so much again. Take it easy. Have a fantastic day. I'll be seeing you soon for more content. But until then, let's hand things over to Knox Hill. Have a good one, guys. Who's the man with the plan? Hmm. If you feel trouble, wild and wild, no he's violent and hit you. 8,000. Wait a minute, hold that style. It's style Dan. Goddamn, Billy Jack. We still riding tires flat. I hear them sirens, sea shots flying. So we driving fire back. If they ain't vibing, lie with that. Got me dressed up in all black. What up? Hood up, and I see them haters. Try to run with us, they gon' need inhalers. Gotta breathe them hard just like the beta players. Grab your respirators. Night invaders get light sabered. Mass on for the shooters. Move like trash. The bed intruder got that Glock and got them woofers. Just press play, I'll keep it moving. Who is Knox? Still, you damn fools. Keep it fresh like canned food. There ain't nothing we can't do, so tune into that damn kill. Yeah. It was never, ever a game.